everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. Welcome to Duck Talk. Yeah, and the thing about them is... They probably got up to the street and started drive, walking across the road as oh. one and get all got smashed. I hope not. That happens. That'll happen. I saved a bunch of them a couple of years ago on uh, West River Road. I got out and sh- shoot you them You Morgan QE Wolf Slattery did? Only di- if they'd been geese, right through them, baby. <laughs> I would have sped up and ran over all of them. I would have had That's gos- Patrick Royce saying this, gos- not me. I would have gosling guts all over the place because they're sky carp and they're worthless, but we don't have that many ducks. You only would have got the slow ones, right? Although Kenny doesn't like the mergansers either, so... Now, I don't know if these were all ducklings or uh, merganser. They were all of the same breed. They were all merganser. We don't know uh, that. We're not going to go into it again. I don't know. It's a beautiful It's a beautiful bird, but they uh, serve no purpose as far as eating. They, they're inedible. So, uh, Why are you... Uh, you have been holding court here for quite some time today, and you have repeatedly said that yesterday's... Twins game was everything that's wrong with baseball. <laughs> well, it took forever. Four hours and 20 minutes. Terrible play. Everybody played terrible. Everybody pitched terrible. Uh, nobody made a play in the field. It was a joke. Mm-hmm. And uh, But finally, uh, Reavers' pal, unfortunately, uh, came in and uh, settled matters in the Twins' favor, Jake uh, Patricia. Patricia from mm-hmm. uh, Faribault. Now, in his defense, he'd warmed up in the second inning and didn't pitch. He'd warmed up in the fifth inning and didn't pitch. Then they finally ran him out there, and he couldn't throw strikes. So He'll probably be gone today, <laughs> the way they shuffle pitchers around. Man, I bet they didn't get into Boston until 2 a.m. Well, it ended at uh, 8.15, so by the time yeah, they, but that, they you got to go Eastern customs. time. Yeah, yeah, well, 8.15, that's what I'm saying, 8.15. Their time? Their time. Yeah. So, and you got to go... Th- they, it takes a little longer. I mean, they they have a special way to go through customs, but it still takes a little longer. Yeah, I bet it was 11, 11.30. I bet some of the fellas had plans for dinner, the go eat a little dinner. lobster out yeah. there at 8 o'clock, maybe have a couple of cocktails, mm-hmm. and uh, didn't happen. So, uh, being, worst, for the Red, worst night for the Red Sox, though. The Red Sox had a... a, a the, the weather forecast in Baltimore was terrible. But the Orioles chose to start the game. The Red Sox had five runs on the board in the second inning. We're ahead five to nothing. Mookie had hit a three-run homer. Or somebody else had hit a home run. And the storms that everybody knew was coming in came in, and they ended up waiting two hours and two an hour, two and a half hours and getting rained out. Rook, so did they, you have good gets, weather in New York? Uh, it was hot and soupy, 85 But you didn't get rainstorms. Uh, we got some rain early, but it wasn't uh, overpowering rain. We we dodged a bullet in, in Manhattan. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in Baltimore, fellas, when they say it's going to, when they say they have a 100% chance of rain now, they're not wrong. Right. They're right. This is, I said, this isn't Calvin going out and standing in the parking lot behind Met Stadium and looking to the west to right. see if there was clouds or not. <laughs> Which is what we used to happen. The, yeah, if we start the game or not. Uh, this is, uh, they knew it was going to rain. You should never start a game in those circumstances. And they uh, did in the Red Sox. I mean, now the Red Sox have to go back there and play a doubleheader in the You know what? Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're mistaking me for someone who's interested. I have zero sympathy for the Boston Red Sox. I, that's my least favorite team in baseball. Well, I still don't think that you. Sh- I still get upset when somebody loses a home run. 
As well, many I, as there I, are I'm now. with you there. Sure. Mookie. Mookie's yeah. fighting to get the MVP award. Yeah. He hits a three run homer and it's off the books. But you know Dozier what? had one of those the year he hit forty two. He had one rained out. I just am not a Red Sox fan. I just I yeah, root well, for the Yankees. That's because you've met them. Yeah. They were always They're grumpy. They're they were grumpy, well, you were, surly people. You, you were around them when they had Lynn and Rice. Who were, everybody always knew Jim Rice was a jackass, but right. Lynn was worse. Lynn was oh a, my God. Lynn, Fred Lynn was a condescending jackass. Yeah. Uh, Jim that's Rice, the worst kind. Jim Rice was just a blow you off guy. Okay. But Fred Lynn talked down to everybody. They always say that Ted Williams taught Yaz how to be a jackass. Mm-hmm. In the clubhouse to the media, and then Yaz taught Lynn and Rice how to be a jackass. <laughs> it was always the worst clubhouse oh, there was. Oh, terrible. And part of it was it was as big as this room. Right. It still is, And isn't it? they had a tremendous amount of media for, for the size of the of the room, and they were always mad that you were around. Yeah. yeah. It's still, I don't think they've done much with the, uh, you know, ba- Wrigley Field now, the Red Cub, the home locker room is fantastic. Their home clubhouse is fantastic. They have re- they they basically, Joe, went underground mm. and built this. And they had rats, supposedly. You. That, uh, as they dug out in there. Good place, center were, field. That were blind Ooh. because they'd never, the seen whole, light. they'd never seen light. They'd been down there in this subterranean area under the ballpark and they'd never never seen light there was that's a whole, what happens in the sewer yeah it was a whole breed of them yeah blind blind what the hell rats. Did they, what did they eat uh, they scavenge around know, somebody the one with vision probably went out and got them peanuts I guess. <laughs> hey uh, uh ren can you run out there again we need uh yeah there's we they left 50 million uh, peanut shells on the uh, thing. We'll eat them. I, I don't know what they ate, but uh, they excavated. You can't believe the excavation they did. I didn't see the club. I didn't go to the clubhouse, but I saw their Champions Club, mm-hmm. which is more ornate than this one. Hmm. That the twins. I haven't had. been in Wrigley for years. You would hardly recognize the place, not. except you'd recognize the press box. That yeah. still sucks. Yeah. But the uh, but the rest of it is, uh, you know, we've changed a lot. Out, you know, outfield, you got great, big, huge scoreboard and, I mean, a message board in uh, left field and you got, you got all kinds Please of Please tell stuff me they on. still have the yard arm out there. Yes, they still put the yard arm up when they win. They put a dub of the, 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 I love that nautical. Yeah, they do. Which must stem from the Wrigley's having their estate on Lake Geneva. It could be, but it also stems from, you know, okay, we're driving by and we look up and we see the flag. That means the Cubbies won it. Right, but I mean, you could have raised it on a regular flagpole. Sure, There's right. a ship's yard art. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, They're not that, that far be. from the lake either. The big lake. I didn't realize how long the Wrigley's had owned that team. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, Phil owned them forever, but his old man owned them before then. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, Mike Beck's, I mean, uh, Bill Beck's father was the president of the team for years and years, and when Bill was working there and uh, planted the ivy and helped build the grandstand and the and the whole, you know, they for years that they didn't have the grandstand. They just had a went down to the. Did Bill flower. Beck get the White Sox from Comiskey? Charles Comiskey? No, he bought them from somebody else. I wonder what John he paid. Allen, did he? I don't know what he paid. No, well, they were they were going to move to St. Pete. They were the first team that was going to move to uh, Florida. Really, I believe they were going to move to St. Petersburg, and he he saved the White Sox. And then we were going to move to St. Petersburg. Well, there wasn't a town in America where we weren't going to go. <laughs> we were going to move there. Uh, in Calvin first was going to move to Seattle, right? Because they were going to sue us. Because they were going to sue baseball because the team had only stayed one year and then moved to mm-hmm. Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. They were going to move there. Then later on, we were going to move to Tampa and they, uh, when Harvey saved the day with the buyout yeah. <laughs> in his own inimitable fashion. Well, that's when he started giving tickets to kids who didn't even want to go to the game. <laughs> no, no. That was, well, one afternoon, the official paid attendance was 52,000. The official attendance was 6,000. Right. They Because they were having a ticket special that day, so they bought them all. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Oh, you want, oh, when we come back. All right. Very confusing. All right. Reavers did this before an offside correspondent did, so a tip of the cap to Reavers. Yes. 
What was the question? The question was, <laughs> you asked me, did Bill Vecht buy the White Sox from Comiskey? And I said, no, I think it was John Allen, which That's I true. was right about. Okay, but here's the beginning. Charles Comiskey moved the Western League's St. Paul Saints yes. to Chicago as a charter member of the American League. And named them the White Stockings. Yep. And then named and the... Uh, he originally had bought the Sioux City Corn Huskers and moved them to St. Paul, from mm-hmm. what I can tell. J. Yeah. Lewis Comiskey inherits the White Sox after the death of his father, Charles Comiskey, in October of 1931. Then Grace Comiskey, widow of J. Lewis, denying a petition by the First National Bank of Chicago to seek bids to sell the club. J. Lewis <laughs> Comiskey's controlling interest passed to Grace Comiskey's daughter, Dorothy Bill Vec. And his partners gained majority control of the White Sox after a lengthy court battle with the Comiskey family in 1958. Arthur Allen, A-L-L-Y-N, assumed ownership of the White Sox after Bill Vec sold his interest to Allen a year later. Chuck Comiskey sold his minority interest in the club to Allen. Well, you were right then. Bill Vec bought it from the Comiskeys and then sold it to John Allen. Then and then Bill came Vec, back and Bold bought the White Sox again. He reacquired the White Sox yeah. from John Allen. Mm-hmm. In December of 1975. Mm-hmm. He sold the Cleveland Indians originally was the first guy to draw 2 million people because of a divorce. Mm-hmm. He had to pay off a divorce, really? so he had to sell the team. Yeah, the Cle- Is the, Kenny in the house yet? I can't see you. Yes, he's in the uh, not, Can we give me a Give five, him a second because there's a, a five major minutes. event on Highway 52 and 80th. Okay. okay. No, I was just going to say, I, I don't need Kenny for this. I was just going to tell you that I there's a new... Headline that can be put up in the Krabby Coffee Shop. All right. Survey finds average person has only 15 perfect days a year. <laughs> that's optimistic. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. Which is, is a meaningless survey because be, be, the days, every day, every human in the world will have a different idea of what a perfect yeah, day so, is. The, the, so every person only has a day that they can describe as perfect yeah. 15, 15 times. times. Yeah. And Phil Fleck over here has 365, so yeah. think of how much that drives the uh, average day. up. The right. rest of us, he's being a hog for these perfect days. Right. If we're only going to have 15, he should have he's a taking few. taking your share. He should have a yeah. few bad ones. Yeah. 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 Is that uh, thinking about or I, actually having them? Well, well it, when again, the day is over, you say, boy, that was a perfect day. It was a right. survey of 2,000 American mm-hmm. adults commissioned by the U.S. High Bush Blueberry Council. I have no mm-hmm. idea what that is. <laughs> and, and, it know, does, my, and it doesn't start with picking blueberries, guys, if you know what I mean. I think so. I wake up you know, at 6 in the morning. Is that what they call and it? And go in the boys' room. Canning apricot. Oh, you know, right. go in the boys' room. Yeah. And if that doesn't go well, my perfect day is already yes. well, already off. It's, it's already X. You get the big family off. feud well, red X already. Gun, right. You're under the gun right, right off the bat. Right away. Well, that didn't go as well as I wanted it to. I so made it to 6, 11 a.m. I got to go back at 7, 15 and try again, you know. You know, I've always said this global warming crowd, they must have a day. They must have well, a, they're, having, they're in their glory no. right now, baby. Well, they must have the perfect temperature in mind. Yeah. Yeah. This survey comes up with most people responded 74 degrees. They actually do have a temperature in mind. Yeah. There's some people that follow me on Twitter that they wake up at 4 in the morning and their day goes bad until they go to bed mm-hmm. simply for the reason that Trump is in office. <laughs> I mean, they are so full of hate from the yeah, get-go but, to the bitter end all day long. Yeah, but, they're wasting might, their but, time. There, but there's as high a percentage... That are upset because their day's not going to go perfect until everybody loves Trump, right? There's I, that right. percentage. A hundred percent. Yeah, I had never considered that. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd ever factor in a political ideology to happiness. Oh, yeah. There's oh, a boy. lot of that. I, I should show you some of these. Well, I don't oh, doubt oh, you. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. They're just so filled with hate. But they're mm-hmm. just wasting their time. Hey, I want to talk about this traffic issue what do we now. Got? Um, <laughs> only one lane, the right shoulder getting by on southbound 52 at 80th down in Invergrove. It looks like a very serious multi-car crash. We've got a lot of first responders on the scene already, and I'm assuming a lot more are going to be coming through. Uh, so if you're southbound uh, 52 and you're approaching 494, exit now. Uh, or exit, what would be a ne- the uh, next exit, That's a Matthew? split road out there, right? Upper, Concord. You upper, could, there's uh, a no, Concord is downtown. South Robert Trail. Uh, 
Highway 3. Well, if you... Uh, you can exit... Set, not, can you exit 70th? I don't know. Hey. Yes, yes. You could get off on 70th. Isn't that 55th a, or there's 70th. There's a median there, yeah. right? So it's almost a freeway. Yeah. 52. So yes. traffic currently jamming at upper 55th. So don't even let yourself get that far exit before upper 55th uh, because traffic has stopped all the way back there. And I'm guessing... I haven't heard the scanner call on this, but I'm guessing... This is a pretty serious one. It's going to take a while to clear. Somebody, somebody rear-ended somebody. I don't know. I can't mm-hmm. tell. It's mm-hmm. a very murky camera shot. Mm-hmm. Is that what I was seeing on 22? Yeah. Yes. It was too murky for me to see anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't Well, I, that's too bad. Anyway, put that up in the crappy, crappy coffee shop. Survey finds the average person has 15 perfect days a year. <laughs> so we got to put that next to the uh, uh, next to the Russian lady, yeah, right? Who's Patrick? never had a happy down no, day in no, her no. She's like 109. Yeah, she's the, she makes up for PJ. Yeah. Because PJ's had 365. Fleck takes all hers. He gets all, but she, she has had none, and she's 120. So mm-hmm. just think of all <laughs> those, what, she, what she's left for the rest of us. It's, uh, it's She's not a selfish person. Uh, person every day like, she goes to the counter. I might make it through today, but so, ends up crossing. So, you, so you're saying she makes a sacrifice? Yes, Patrick, for the rest, for the rest, of, rest of us. us. Not having a perfect day. <laughs> Here, you yes. take mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I would describe as a perfect day. Well, do you want to know what they said? Yeah, sure. Uh, I couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, realizing involve- it's a beautiful sunny day. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Long I mean, hot shower. No, not yeah. me. A meaningful long hug. Eh, nah. Don't touch me. Nah. The first sip of coffee of the day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Okay. Every sip of coffee. Mm-hmm. Walking into an air conditioned building on a hot day. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Baking treats. Is there weed in them? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's some yeah, goody two shoes. I'm not reading crap this crap. Oh, yeah, it's, it's full crap. of cuddling. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is something about a long talk with your spouse? Yeah. yeah. Petting, yeah. Okay. petting a oh, cat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can rip that God up. That's, oh, that's BS. Are you kidding me? What about, about, what about long about, talk with your spouse? How about when it's 10 o'clock at night and the only time you really spend together is watching something on TV together? Yeah. And you say to her, hey, you want to watch a couple of episodes of such and such yep. that we watch together. And if she would say yes, instead of no, I have to watch New York housewives. Yeah. Now, that's, that's, see, that's, that's what that's, would make me happy. Yeah. There's nothing better for a marriage than separate TVs. <laughs> well, we have separate TVs, yeah. but the watching something together think, is, uh, you know, can I play Dr. Just, Phil for a second? Just here? one second. Okay, Kenny. Uh, uh, Suge, go to number one on that list. Is number one on the list taking your wife to New York City for your 25th <laughs> wedding anniversary? No, number one is realizing it's a beautiful Boom. sunny day. Okay. Same thing, right, Matthew? Exactly. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kenny, just wait until Reavers gets in. He's got something to show you, but later on. But Patrick, let me play Dr. Phil for just a moment here. I think when you are inquiring about viewing the, the exact same. We want to watch the tunnel on. on PBS. Right. She, I, it might be your del- you want to watch New York. Concert. I think it's your delivery, though. It's the, hey. <laughs> I think, you know, maybe a softer, dear, good evening. Yes, or you know, yeah. maybe just, hey, do you want to? I mean, I don't well, know. It, basically, it would be something that was discussed an hour earlier. And then Got it. I'd, say, I'd say, hey, are you going to come up and watch this bleeping, bleeping <laughs> thing or not? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She says that no, up. and there goes my what, perfect day. What the hell's wrong with you? Could, you? you could have said, I had a perfect day going until... <laughs> Sports Talk will be back shortly, but now, uh, thanks to our great friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale. From the Wall Street Journal in Your Money Now. Stocks were mixed at today's market close. A big drop in Facebook shares dragged the NASDAQ composite and the S&P 500 lower. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 112 points, closing at 25,527. The NASDAQ fell 80 points. The S&P 500 dropped 8 points. Facebook shares tumbled 19%, dropping $120 billion from the company's market value. Shares of super 
super value jumped 65%. The Eden Prairie food distributor and grocery store operator agreed to be acquired by United Natural Foods for about $2.9 billion. The per share price represents a 67% premium over super value's closing stock price on Wednesday. United Natural Foods said it will sell off super value's retail business, meaning the grocery stores. That includes 3,000 stores. Aviation industry experts are finalizing rules that will enable some planes to routinely take off in significantly lower visibility than currently permitted at most U.S. airports. Officials involved in the process said that will result in fewer delays and cancellations and more reliable schedules in heavy rain, fog, or snow. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, Bruce, we're going to cut you loose. We've got some uh, crashes here we need to talk about. This report sponsored by Hotels.com. First, uh, it's this big one, southbound 52. Uh, the crash blocking everything at 80th. That's why traffic jams at upper 55th. Only the right shoulder getting by at this time. And this crash is serious enough that uh, recon has been called. That means this blockage is going to be in place for probably the rest of the rush. The other one I want to mention, westbound 94, a double left lane blocking. So, uh, what are you saying, Patrick? Patrick, put your headphones on. What are you saying, Patrick? We're also, you and I, going to open up our own uh, marital aid store, too, right next, next, right right next, next to the door. Krabby Coffee. Oh my God. And you know what we'll honor? <laughs> the late, great Jersey voice. Well, I'm not sure the late the Jersey voice is the late, great, but we haven't heard from him I in 20 years. I think so. I think he's the late. We haven't heard from him in 20 oh. years, but we could call it, we could name it in honor of the Jersey voice oh who used God. to call the show all the time. Batteries not included. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's no. extra. No. And you can buy those over here at a big markup. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad the off-air portion is so X-rated. It'd make a great podcast. This one sticks to the refrigerator. <laughs> 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 and doubles oh. as a handle. <laughs> doubles as a handle. Oh my That's God. Right. Um, hi. Anyway, uh, let's here get we back go. to the show here. Uh, uh, twins wrapped up. Here's now, John first Hike. of all, officially, when Height doesn't return till next Thursday, we won't see him till next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. He okay. is uh, on his way to visit. I hope family. he's no. doing something. He is not on his way. He is taking today to rest. Oh, up gotta for get it. some stuff done. You know, mm. gotta, gotta get some stuff done. Wait, what? He's not on the road till I tomorrow. I thought he was back Tuesday. He's not on the road till tomorrow morning. Oh, what a jerk. I know. My, my wife used to, uh, in her first marriage. We're not back to this sex apparel. No, there. no. In her first marriage, <laughs> there was a guy named sex Charlie, apparel. who I believe was a grandfather of, the, of her first husband. Yeah. And she loved Charlie and used to play cards with Charlie. But Charlie would go up to Briggs Lake every year for deep rent a cabin for two weeks. Yeah. And he'd spend like 10 days getting ready for this trip. He'd get the oil changed and the whole thing. It's about 50 minutes up the street. You know, but it was, he it had was, to get ready. And then he, he couldn't sleep, so he'd make shelves. He made shelves. And the whole basement was like shelves that, <laughs> shelves the, that, that the wife did want. But he'd be down there describing Gene Shepard's <laughs> Ollie Hop Noodles Haven of Rest, Haven of Bliss. Yeah. Remember when the old man would get ready all year and they go up to this sinkhole, algae filled <laughs> pond yeah. to try to catch a bullhead? Yeah. That's, that's, that was this Charlie guy. She loved that guy. Uh, The Twins wrapped up a three-game sweep of the Blue Jays yesterday in Toronto. Garver had his first ever four-hit game. Mauro Rosario chipped in three hits apiece. Matt Belisle pitched two innings of scoreless relief. For his first win and of the season, and your guy got himself. Is he still there? Uh, as far I checked this morning, he is. Uh, Pat's talking, of course, about Fairbo native Jake Patricia, future Fairbo Laker Jake Patricia. He surrendered four earned runs uh, in the loss for the Blue Jays. The boys are now in Boston for the first of a four game. We got a lineup. We got a lineup. I had, I didn't check. I guess before I came in, I was well, looking we at want some other news. I'll find one here shortly. Uh, Gibson will start opposite Sox left-hander Brian Johnson. First pitch from Fenway is at six ten. The Vikings continue to gather during the first week of training camp at the new TCO Performance Center down in Egan. The team did announce that less than 5,000 free you tickets You don't remain. have to throw that 
Performance Center crap in there. Well, did just you come up with a name? Egan. Just down in Egan. We need a Egan. new name, yeah. Royce. Well, I was going to say, we got to get more creative than Egan. that. Dan Egan. Okay. We don't want to be giving all these free plugs. All right. We need, we need yeah. something better than yeah. Egan. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, news. But anything happened out there today? Do we know? If anything? it did, it's all covered online. 1500ESPN.com. Matthew Collar's got it all broke down. What did David Koresh call his compound? <laughs> Can we call it that? <laughs> What's the name of that? The, the place? Ziggy Compound. Branch Davidians. Branch, Branch Davidians. Yeah. What was the Branch, compound? Uh, Branch uh, Ziggy. The, the followers of the Vikings, as far as their belief, isn't much different than the Branch Davidians. They're, they're or very, the Heavens Gators. They're, they're they would very, do exactly. Uh, they would put oh the tennis God. shoes on. The Heavens Gators, the tennis shoe people. Yeah, with the purple. Were, yeah, yeah, right. The tennis shoe people. Hey, I saw a thing today <laughs> about the black U.S. kids. They yeah. executed. Yeah. Uh, this is off topic, but I'm shocked. The, the last six members of the people who shot off the sarin gas in the in the Tokyo, oh right, twenty yeah. years I, ago, I read that, got executed. They the last six, them. the last six, and they were part of a doomsday cult. Mm-hmm. So aren't you doing them a favor? I guess. Why did it would take twenty years? I think these would have people wanted maybe, to be killed earlier, right? Maybe that was part of the punishment. Yeah, keeping them alive. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, they oh, could not today again. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, every every night they say, "Well, maybe tomorrow." <laughs> yeah. Hate to ruin if your perfect day, but they, it's not going to be today. They just killed the other seven like six months ago or something, and now they killed the last six. Why did they keep the poor devils alive for twenty years if it was a doomsday cult? I think you made a good point there, Kenny. That's their purgatory. <laughs> Yes. Right. So I miss uh, Red Judd. I got Judd all wrong. I didn't think he enjoyed going to uh, training camp. Harrigan oh, he was, loved Matt. Uh, Harrigan was telling me uh, he was out the door be- be- eight seconds after their show ended yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, faster than Suchley leaves but, the but building. But he lay liked the Mankato time. Yeah, and not only did he love Mankato, but he really likes this place, too. Mm-hmm. News notes from today. Thousands of law enforcement officers from around the... Why would you rather have a tooth pulled? Oh, Judd wants his own parking spot. He's thinking about trying... He's trying to get an apartment there. There's nothing to write. There's nothing to write when you cover all those the access is now apparently worse. You don't get to see anything either. Thousands of law enforcement officers from around the country filled North Heights Lutheran Church in Arden Hills this morning for the 11 a.m. funeral of Joseph Gom, a Minnesota corrections officer killed in the line of duty last week. Gom, 45, of Blaine, was killed last week by a Stillwater prison inmate and is the first corrections officer in Minnesota to be killed in the line of duty. More than a dozen men holding American flags lined the entrance as a 20-minute procession of family members and officers entered the church to the sound of bagpipes. The large sanctuary appeared full with Governor Mark Dayton among those in attendance. A number of people uh, were wearing shirts in Gom's honor, which were designed by State Corrections Officer Shane Warnke, who worked at the Stillwater Prison. His mother said that more than 1,000 shirts have already been sold and proceeds will go directly to Gom's Jay family. Jay Coles tried to warn him. Yep. Tried to warn them on Channel 5 that uh, they were playing with fire out there. A standoff in the parking lot of a Burnsville Costco ended peacefully this morning, according to authorities. Burnsville police reported that just after I wanted a parking spot or what? Mm -hmm. Uh, Going into Costco, man, it's all, it's it's chaos. Uh, No, he was a suicidal guy, Pat, was in the parking lot. Uh, It was near Burnhaven Drive and McAndrews Road. Police said they received a call at around 5.30 p.m. yesterday reporting a suicidal man was in his vehicle in a lot and was in possession of a gun. The store closed as a result of the oh, incident. That but cost them money. 5.30? Yeah. Then they reopened that this Costco, morning. man. Okay. Well, so we got him out of there? Yep. Everything's good. So there's a lot of empty parking lots he could have gone to. Why didn't he want to mess up poor uh, Costco? Don't have the answer I to that. I'm not sure. sure. Driving around the one in St. Louis Park, you could become suicidal looking for a parking spot. It's difficult is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Super Value, the Minnesota food distributor that struggled for years after a failed attempt to create one of the nation's largest grocery chains, was sold today to a Rhode Island-based wholesaler in a $2.9 billion deal that also put Cub Foods, the biggest grocer in the Twin Cities, on the sales block. You know, getting a perfect parking spot would impact your perfect day. It would. Yeah. yeah. Well, your perfect day does not include going to Costco That's in true. any form, I want to tell you. 
Uh, executives of Super Value said the company acquiring it. United. You know, I park in the same spot every morning. I get here and I have the privilege. I don't. It's not a reserved spot yeah. or anything. I just get here early enough to where yes. I get the same spot every morning. And let me tell you, when somebody accidentally parks, parks in my spot, that's ooh. your day. Your perfect day. I gone. seriously, I'm so angry. I can <laughs> barely function. I mean, I've been tempted to grab my uh-huh. toe strap and pull them out of there and pull them out on the Berry Street and let the car sit. And that's your spot right over that third one over. That's why no, I park in occasionally. No, it's in the morning. It, oh, I, in I the get morning. here at five okay. in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And it really drives What's me insane. What's going on in Berry, by the way, that nobody's parking on it? Because they're now enforcing the two-hour limit. I yeah. shouldn't have ever mentioned it on the radio. No, no it's, it's <laughs> isn't it? It's summer. The kids are all gone. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yes. No, but they're it, also tagging. One, yeah, in the afternoon. <laughs> they're tagging with. Pictures. That's only until five p.m. Though. Oh. It's not like that overnight. No, the kids are gone. Oh. Well, okay. I had to when I went to Luke Bryan. I was oh uh, I was forced to park on Barry mm-hmm. and and not park in our own parking lot by the security guard. <laughs> I told the boss all about it. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. I didn't say anything. I support yeah. it. We need to. Uh... He said, I'm going to tow your car. I said, I work here. He said, I will tow your car. <laughs> At that point, I just decided to be nice and give it up and call the family members off who are going, you know who he is? I said, no, he did not say anything. He's got a be car. Dude, she's got a car load of women. They're like, I said, hey, let me, do not do me any favors right now. I will handle this. Just. I did park on the street. Uh, say, Joe. Yeah. You always uh, kind of lament our lost touch with nature. <laughs> yes. Stories throughout uh, Garage Logic. Actress and model Chrissy Teigen stirred up Twitter yesterday when she and her two-year-old daughter, Luna, were filmed playing with what they believed was a harmless bug. She allowed it to land on her arm and invited her daughter (laughs) to kiss it and call it nice. Well, it turns out that nice bug was actually a tarantula hawk, a poisonous species of spider wasp. <laughs> According to the United Kingdom. Is the little baby dead now or not? The uh, young girl? I, no, no, the girl is fine. The little girl. Oh, they're they're so both fine. It didn't bite, bite them. No, and they're lucky. Uh, according to the United Kingdom's Natural History Museum, the tarantula hawk can dish out the most painful wasp sting in the <sighs> world. And will cause, if it, in other words, if it were to sting you in the arm, mm-hmm. most likely you'd have to have it amputated. That's how dangerous this bug was. One entomologist. This is in California? I believe so. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I'm not sure exactly where they Who were. Who is she? John Legend's wife? Yeah. John Legend's wife, mm-hmm. yes. Um, Did he come home and say, boy, you're a dummy? No, I'm trying to find out <laughs> there was a date line in this, and mm-hmm. I can't remember if they were, where they mm-hmm. were. But anyway, she says it. Oh my God! But he was so nice in response to um, in uh, response to people the, that the, were the calling The bug her was up. so nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah he's a moron. I, <laughs> I got the hornets out of the backyard. Did you? Yep. Sprayed the hell out of them, and at nine and night after the down. After they settled down, they're quick. They're not like why they're worse than why. If you get them mad, they're smaller. They're quicker. They're quicker. They're quick. An Oregon high school student who was suspended over a shirt that touted President Trump's proposed border wall has agreed to settle <laughs> his lawsuit after the school agreed to pay $25,000 for his legal fees and have its principal what did write say? him an apology. Addison Barnes, who graduated this year from Liberty High School just outside of Portland, filed a lawsuit in federal court in May alleging that the school violated his First Amendment rights. The shirt said, quote, Donald J. Trump Border Wall Construction Company. End quote. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And the wall just got ten feet taller right underneath. You know how you uh, solve that problem? You uh, shouldn't get to wear t-shirts to school. <laughs> what the I, hell? I, I, it'd be hard <laughs> for me to a couple uniform. It'd hard oh, for me to oppose that since I <laughs> since I wear a t-shirt to work every no. day. But, <laughs> t-shirts with a uh, but I don't have sayings on. Them. Okay, country club. I want a collar <laughs> yeah. and a shirt. I yeah. don't have sayings on. You mine. can have an alligator in the upper right. left corner or a guy on a polo horse. <laughs> yeah. How about a, a, how about a t-shirt, but it doesn't say anything. How about a T-shirt that looks like a collared shirt? Mm -hmm. What you're actually saying is uniforms. Just to make everybody wear (laughs) uniforms. 
Are they military uniforms, Joe? No. Because I want those things on my shoulders. I had a tough decision Those today. danglers on you my shoulders. You want the epaulets. I went out yeah. this morning. I had a tough decision. It was cold this morning. Maybe this I could affect your perfect Sweatshirt day. or T-shirt. I, I went short sleeve. Yeah, but you're a guy that doesn't wear a coat in January. I know, but I, I was thinking. If, if I always, my preference is always sweatshirts, but not when it's warm, obviously. Yeah. How about a nice sweater once in a while? Yeah, to hell with him. Yeah, but he has to give it back to Rick Aguilera so much that he just can't. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Remember your sweater you had to, in your dream? Oh, yeah. You had to give right. it back to Aggie. Aggie, yeah, here's your sweater. I got it. That what? was a weird one. That was one of Pat's was, crazy wasn't dreams. Wasn't as weird as the Tommy Kramer dream. No, when I shot the guy. Yep. <laughs> The guy well, shot the me. The, guy 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 shot, the little Vietnamese yeah, guy shot, shot me. He was selling wood. Yeah. He was selling firewood. <laughs> and he was wearing a, a Tommy, Tommy Kramer, Kramer jersey. jersey. Wearing a Tommy Kramer jersey. He shoots Patrick. He shoot oh. me. I came out and I went to tell him I didn't have any wood. But before I could tell him we didn't want any wood, he shot me. <laughs> it was a preemptive strike. <laughs> we don't want any wood, okay? And don't ask about my car or tell but, me it's cool. But I was shot before I had a chance to yeah, announce. You couldn't even open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> May now in the shoulder. But but the other dream, I'm sorry, Chris, no, but the right. other dream with Aggie when you had his sweater and you had to you had to take it off and you you lost your tooth and you were bleeding <laughs> all over you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, Aggie, I got your sweater. The last your time is coming out of your mouth. Last time I had one of those, I was telling Morris last year I stole his truck. <laughs> I stole Mike Morris's truck out of the parking lot here. Oh my God! <laughs> I so, had no idea, and then I was had to get it back to him. In what it. world would a sweater that would fit you would fit Rick Aguilera? <laughs> dreams are not. It's one of those always, Kirby sweaters, though, right? Dreams are not always based on logic. That's true. That is very true. They happen to have one suit left. <laughs> That's, that's the, the truth. Left. <laughs> that's the truth. Jerry Leonard. Yep. That's how long ago now, that was. You got anything in a big man? We got one left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bought that Pat one. Last bought year. that one the previous year. <laughs> <sighs> Manal Nimnual. Was oh him. Wait, she was. You didn't wa- even come close. Can we try no. to get through one story without interrupting? Didn't even come close. She was waiting patiently for her husband to be Pakim. June Germ to join her at the aisle in the Thai city of Ratchaburi on Sunday, July I don't understand 22nd. why you don't just make up easier to pronounce <laughs> right. names. Yeah. That's what John Height does. Right. You know. He writes in his own names. But the young man never showed up. Uh-oh. What could possibly be worse than having your groom ditch you on your wedding day? Having him ditch you in front of thousands of strangers watching live on Facebook. Oh. It sounds like a bad joke, but unfortunately it was the reality for the poor heartbroken bride who had decided to live stream her wedding only to have it end in disaster. Mm-hmm. Well, she's a numbskull. Thousands of people were watching at home as the 24-year-old announced to family and friends that he had, quote, run away, end <laughs> quote. Uh, the save version of the five-minute video has since been shared more than 30,000 times Did on Facebook. Weep? Did she weep? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and viewed more than five million times. Thankfully, most were sympathetic and shared supportive messages with the brides. Did so, we get an explanation from this gutless coward? The bride's cousin, who said the romance was a bit of a whirlwind, but everything was going fine until a week before their wedding day. That's when the bride learned that the groom was having an affair with another woman. When the young woman confronted him, he apparently insisted that he still wanted to get married. Then, just a few days before the wedding, he told her he couldn't afford the $6,000 cost. You know, Kenny was right. You should have just made up some names yes. because for two reasons. It would have made the story more compelling to just say John and Mary Smith. Well, she caught him cheating and she still was going to go through with the wedding. And we're never going to uh, encounter these people. She's a dummy. I like Johnny and uh, Pauline. Those so you guys wanted me to go with John and Pauly in, this, no, Pauline. in the Thai city yeah, of Pauline. Ratchaburi. John and, John right, make, up a, make up a Derek. name for the Thai city. Hey, hey, how is Derek doing over there in Taipei? Uh, Middletown. You guys are a treat. Smallville. Hey, uh, are you done with that dumb story? Yeah, I am done Okay, with that Such, dumb you story. know, uh, that commercial you do for the, uh, the I think it's an insurance company. Slow the hell down, put your phone Federated down. Federated insurance. Yeah. 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 Along that line, uh, I'm looking learning something about this crash that's blocking everything on southbound 52 at 80th evidently we had some construction there traffic was stacked up and stopped 
and somebody came in hot and yep. rear-ended a van oh, uh, mm-hmm. without apparently without braking at all. Ooh, that's uh, so. That's so the what, texters are out in force. I didn't say that. I'm but going to. It, it sounds uh, it sounds like that's what happened, uh, and that's why recon has been called, and that's why traffic on southbound 52 currently jamming at upper 50. What's Fifth. recon mean? Reconstruction? Yes. Reconstruct the yes, accidents? Yes, mm-hmm. they do that. Do you in, have fatalities yet, or don't you know? They do that in the case of a fatal or oh. a life-changing injury. Well, then uh, we're going to have some fatals, it sounds uh, like. All right. Yep. All right, just Sorry. a moment. Group credit see dealer for detail. We're just looking at the uh, leaderboard at the Canadian Open. Pretty good field, including uh, Tommy Fleetwood, Bubba Watson, Dustin Johnson. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice, nice field Brooks for the Kepka, Canadian Tony Open. Brooks Tony Finnell. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, we have uh, Tim Yotter from Viking Update. going to give us a report from what's going on, uh, what went out there on day two. And uh, my pal Tony Maserati, who is a... Uh, it's spelled like the car? Uh, no, it's an SS, but he, mm-hmm. it's Ma- Maz. But uh, he uh, he's a sports talk show host in Boston, wrote for the Globe and the Herald for many years, talk about the Red Sox and other, uh, with the Twins getting ready to play the Red Sox. Is Lee Monfield still kicking around out there? He's doing stuff. He does kind of freelancey stuff. I was trying to find him a year ago. I finally tracked him down. He just writes when he wants what to What about write. Gammons? Gammons is uh, working for MLB Network, and uh, I think MLB Network, and uh, but he's not writing for the Globe anymore. Sean is his notes still, column in the Sunday well, Globe. Well, started it started all. It started all. the notes yeah. phenomenon, yeah. that's for sure. 1500 ESPN is KSTP. St. Paul, Minneapolis, it's 67 degrees. The Ride with Royce is coming up next. Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. It's crazy to think that a few weeks ago we were talking about whether or not Tua Tagovailoa should consider retiring. After two concussions and worldwide debates on player safety and NFL culpability, Tua has done nothing but go back to work and currently has the Dolphins riding a three-game win streak and one loss behind the division favorite Buffalo Bills. While everyone was yapping about the end of his career, Tua Tagovailoa said he'll decide when it's time. And clearly, he's not ready to hang up the cleats. Hi, this is Chris Howard from the Plugged In with Chris Howard podcast. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting up to the minute scores for every sport. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the MLB playoffs, the start of the NHL season, MMA, boxing, and golf. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts.